Guess what? I'm not in Handmade Studio. I want to welcome you today to my home. That's right, I'm at home. And the reason why I'm at home is because for the last month or two, I've been watching all of your videos. And I've been saying, oh, first of all, you guys do amazing creative things. I've learned tips I never knew after 20 some years in this business. And I said to the marketing team, I just want to go home. I want to get away from these business reports. I want to get away from the every day to day running a company. And I want to go home and I want to get back to my roots. I want to make products in my kitchen like I used to 20 years ago. And I started like a lot of you. I fell in love with soaping, both cold process and mountain pour. It was a way to pay off medical bills. It was a way to prevent foreclosure and bankruptcy. And I developed a really thriving business of making products. And that grew into the soap supply business and all that that you guys have probably read online. So I said to the team, guess what? I'm going home. I'm putting on my pajamas. I'm grabbing a glass of wine. So grab one yourself. And two of you are coming with me. So I have Abby here that's our videographer. Um, well. We have two videographers, but she's the one that does our Facebook Lives. And I have Jackie here that does the comments and answers and gives you links. And that's it. I don't have any fancy recipes on boards behind the camera. I don't have a team supporting me. I don't have a makeup artist. Did this all myself. I did get my hair colored today because I do every eight weeks because I'm totally gray at 53. Um, but it's really just you and me and a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or whatever kind of floats your boat. And we're doing stuff in my house, so welcome to my home. The one thing I am really passionate about is I don't want this to be a plug for buying things and about Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, I want this to be about us making products, talking about techniques, you asking questions, making comments, and um, it's, it's just kind of like two friends sort of getting together and having fun. But saying that, building up to this, I'm like, well, what the heck am I going to make? Because I had this idea of, you know, putting on my pajamas, putting on my slippers, just like I did 20 years ago, getting ready for craft shows and making products and experimenting. We won't be throwing anything down the toilet like I did back 20 years ago, learning how to make products. Don't tell my husband that. Um, but what I did is I stumbled across Handmade Magazine, and this is the issue. It's hot off the presses. It's the issue that if you subscribe tonight to Handmade Magazine, and we'll put a link on the page, you'll get all these recipes. And so as I was sort of, um, the issue, let me back up. The issue is about regional, how to sell to different regions in the U.S. So people in the South, what are they like versus you know, the Southwest and the Northeast, and there's inspiration for each of these. Because maybe you live in those areas and you need a little, like, just some ideas and inspiration. Or maybe you're a business and you want to sell, start selling outside of your current region. This covers all the regions. And Susan Barclay Nichols was kind enough to write about the Canadian region. And if you follow her online, I just absolutely love her to death. Um, but she, she wrote some great articles and a recipe. So as I was looking at, like, what am I going to make tonight? You know, I'm soaping in my slippers, and am I going to make melt and pour? Am I going to make cold process? What am I going to do? And I went through this, and I found a recipe that we've had a lot of requests on, and it's the mechanic scrub. So we're going to make that live tonight, and we're going to make a couple other soaps, or I'm going to talk about a couple other soaps. This recipe is in the issue. It's the sea glass recipe. It's melt and pour soap. It's made with oatmeal. It's made with different melt and pour. And then we make the melt and pour. We show you how to turn it into like a sea glass look. I think this is awesome um, anywhere. Like we're up in Cleveland, Ohio is near, um, you know, is obviously on Lake Erie. This would gr be great in Marblehead, Sandusky, but it's great in any anywhere where there's water, frankly. So. This is good. This recipe is in the new Handmade magazine. And the other one is this Canyon soap. It's a cold process recipe that's in there. And I don't know if you can see the colors. You certainly can't smell it. It smells wonderful. But we give you the recipe and the different techniques for making this. So that's really awesome. And of course, if you like these little organza bags, which you can smell through, 
those are sold at wholesale. But again, I, I'm not here to plug Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm here to, I don't know, just with friends giving tips. This is our lemon butter emulsified sugar scrub. This recipe is awesome. It's going to be online. It's in the magazine. You know, Wholesale has lavender butter, which is, you know, we've had for years. Lime butter, tangerine butter, all the different butters where the essential oils are already in the butters. This one smells awesome. I'm not going to put my fingers in it because I want to do a recipe. So this, this recipe is in Handmade Magazine also. So I'm almost, I'm almost um, through my plug, so bear with me. So Handmade Magazine, get it if you can. Subscribe. It's only $10.50 if you do an annual. But the really cool subscription in print is that you get these samples. So this month I want to show you, and again, you can still subscribe tonight to the magazine. You get a sample of the oatmeal. You get a sample of pumice powder. You get a sample of Iliot orange Iliot clay. You get a sample of avocado powder. And you get a sample of ice wine. So every time the print subscription gets mailed, a subscription, not a single issue, you get at least five samples. And this month we've included the sixth, which are, um, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 blend recipes that go along with the issue for the regional. So buy the magazine. It's super awesome whether you're trying to grow your business or just be inspired. I like it because while my husband is watching all those football games, the Super Bowl, basketball, which if you're from Cleveland, LeBron James and his team, which we kind of suck right now, but um, you're able to, to just really get some cool inspiration. It's nice to armchair read. You can tear out recipes that you like. So that's that. If you guys have questions, ask away. Jackie's online. She'll post answers. I'll answer some. And let's get started. So what we're going to make is this mechanic scrub. And I'm going to hold it. I don't know if you have used these lids, but we have some lids that like pop up, which guys really like. I kind of like it. But here's the mechanic scrub. And it's made with a foaming bath whip and a lot of goodies. And what I did, man, this smells good. It's bourbon vanilla, which is very manly. Mm. I have to get that for my husband. Um, but what I did is I grabbed the recipe, and I've not pre-made the recipe. Because like I said, you guys get our recipes, and, I, and our marketing team develops them. I'd love to tell you I've developed every one of the 800 recipes, but that's just not true. Um, Sue in marketing, and um, Abby, and Maddie, and Jackie, and Amaris, they develop the recipes, and I get to decide the ones I like or don't like, but not everybody has my preferences. So we put them out there, we test them, we put them out there, and we hope that you like them. So what I did, and remember, I don't know if you guys hear the phone ringing, but this is my house, so um, hopefully it'll stop ringing, I apologize. Um, so what I did is I grabbed this recipe for the mechanic scrub, and I did not make it ahead of time. Because I want to be like you. I want to test the recipe or I want to use the recipe just as if you would use it live in your home. So that's, that's it. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my wine to the side. I'm going to take a little sip before we go. And I'm going to move it to the side because I'm a big believer that you don't drink coffee, you don't drink water, you don't have open things around where you're making. And even though I'm making for myself, I still don't want to drink it. I don't want to drink the residue. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're just going to get started. Um, just as if you bought the kit or read the recipe and had the ingredients at home. And one thing I want you to, to know is all of our kits, there's a link on there for the recipe. You can buy the kit and it's a great discount and all that good stuff. But a lot of times you have all of this in your home and we want to inspire you. Our first and foremost um, mission, uh, like what we do is we just want you to be successful. And while we have to sell things to obviously pay the bills, um, if you have a half a jar of foaming bath whip, 
take that recipe online and maybe cut it in half and use half the ingredients and make it yourself. And then if you love it, go ahead and order the kit or order more. So we're gonna do this recipe. Um, I will tell you, I have my little KitchenAid here. This is my home KitchenAid. Um, it is a, called a mini, a KitchenAid mini. So it's half the size of what we use in the studio or at work. So I am gonna cut this recipe in half. But if you take a second and grab a piece of paper and grab a pencil or a pen, I'm going to go slow enough through this that you're going to be able to write this recipe down before you get the magazine or before it goes online, um, before anyone. So again, this is a mechanic scrub, so take a second, go grab paper and pencil. I'll chat here for a minute. I'll remind everyone um, to go ahead and like our Facebook, and this is a big joke among us. I think it's that way on the screen, not that way. So like our Facebook page so you'll get the new videos when they go live. Make sure you share this um, because I think it's really important for all soap makers and creative people to make things the right way and safely. And I think we do a pretty good job at that. So share it. Um, and so that's it. So hopefully your paper and pencil wasn't too far away and you're back. So bear with me. I'm like I said, over 50 and wear glasses, and we're gonna go through this slowly. Ask questions, Jackie's behind the computer answering. If they're vital questions, I'm gonna go ahead and answer them. But one thing we found is when I answer questions live online, people that are watching this later don't always understand the sequence. And when you go back, I don't want you to have to watch the whole video to get the answer to your question. So you and I are talking, but she's gonna answer the questions live online with links to help you. It just makes it easier for you and we're, we're here for you. So the first thing is um, I have a scale and if you haven't bought a scale before, um, I really like this scale. You can get them all over. Of course you can get them from us, but you, you can get it maybe locally. I'll be honest with you, it has a cover to protect this area Usually after about three uses, this cover in my house would get torn off because I would get frustrated. But anyway, you wanna turn the scale on so you can see that. And one of the things when you make products is people will say tear the scale. And not everybody knows what that means. And what that means is you put your container on the scale and you hit the tear button and it takes the scale back to zero because you don't want to include the weight of your measuring container into the weight of the product you're using. So that's what that means. And I would love to tell you I'm so co coordinated to measure this recipe backwards where you could see this, but I'm just not. I can't, the people in the office will tell you, I cannot even eat and chew gum and walk at the same time. Well, nobody can eat and chew gum at the same time, but. Um, so the scale will have different measurements, different modes, grams, kilograms, ounces, pounds. Um, I, in this recipe, it looks like they wrote it in pounds. So I'm going to put it on the pound setting. And the first thing we're going to do is measure out the foaming bath whip. So I'm going to put my, um, in this case, it's a glass microwave safe, but we're not heating anything. I'm going to tear the scale so it now says zero. And I'm gonna take the foaming bath whip. And Abby, tell me if I'm going faster than the camera. I sometimes get in a mode. Make sure you guys ask questions. But in this recipe, again, I'm cutting it in half because I have the mini mixer, which I just love. My husband and kids bought it for me for Christmas. And we're gonna go eight ounces of the foaming bath whip. Now, one of the questions we get sometimes about the foaming bath whip is, it's, oh, nine, because I, I told you guys I can't eat and chew gum at the same time, let alone talk and measure, so. 8.3, eight on the nose, perfect. So, um, one of the questions we get about the foaming bath whip is, it's more liquid than it used to be. It used to be, more solid and um, my answer to that is if it was more solid for you hooray normally what it was was more solid on the top and more liquid on the bottom 
and that's because it was inconsistent. And we worked with a team of chemists at a company named Lubrizol, and if you look up Lubrizol, they're a very large international chemical company. And they're located here in the Cleveland, Ohio area. And we went to their chemist and we said, can you help us? Because it was very inconsistent. And they helped us with our process. The recipe stayed the same. They helped us with our process. We changed that process. So now what it is is it's just typically thinner throughout the whole batch, but it's just like whipping cream. If you whip it, and I'm going to show you, it's going to get light and fluffy. It's just going to be more consistent batch to batch. So if you get the new, and we've made it this way almost a year, but because sometimes people don't buy you know, every month, they'll see a difference. And I wanted to let you know about that. So if you've not used a KitchenAid, um, it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to move all these bottles. Make sure you guys make comments and whatnot. Um, a KitchenAid, it has a little uh, locking mechanism. It goes up along that and you turn and it locks. In this case, this recipe, I'm going to go ahead and use the whip. Sometimes there's a paddle. I already put that away so it wasn't in the way. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take eight ounces of foaming bath whip. We're going to put it in our bowl. And I apologize for this not being a clear bowl, but the little mini mixer doesn't have a clear bowl. Um, it only, to my knowledge, is, has the metal bowl. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Bring all of it out. We're going to put our whisk on. Drop it down, and on this side it locks, and on this side, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's the whipping mechanism. And I usually start out kind of slow, but frankly, I I'm, turn it way up. So I'm going to ask Abby, who's behind working the camera and the microphone, if it gets too loud, let me know, and I'll turn it off. So you guys give us some feedback. Otherwise, I'm going to get going. It's already about half the... Uh, it's already about half the... Um, volume. So that's good. The next part of the recipe is, calls for six ounces of pumice. So I'm going to put this in my sink. And pumice, let's see. Here we go. Crafter's Choice comes sealed in these nice airtight bags. I just tear it. If you really like clean cuts, you could use scissors. Oh boy. You guys might want to hand me the scissors over there. Oh, oh, thank you. So you can do a nice clean cut. But it comes sealed with a Ziploc seal. I told you guys this isn't pre-rehearsed. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Boy, they're doing a good job in restock. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to tear our scale out again because we don't want the weight of the cup. To, I'm going to turn this down because I feel like I'm yelling at you guys. I'm sorry. You don't want the weight of the cup to go into your product. So you press the tear button again. And I'm just going to use one of these cups as a scoop. And we're going for half the recipe, so eight ounces of foaming bath whip and six ounces of pumice, which is a lot of pumice. That's two ounces, so I'm going to turn this back on, kind of slower. It's two. Two point five, so we're at four point five. We need one point five so we can get to six. There we go. And go ahead and turn it up and whip that in. That looks wonderful. And now we're going to go ahead and add one ounce of apricot oil. Okay, one ounce of apricot oil. 
Let's see, I got vanilla color stabilizer, safflower oil, apricot oil. Tear out the scale because we don't want that container to be part of the one ounce. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 8. One ounce. And this is going to help with some of the moisturizing benefits. Just going to put it on medium. And if you like to get every little drop out, you can use, I love these little spatulas. I just got these at Bed Bath & Beyond. I'd love to tell you we sold the best or something, but they really, really scrape the cups out good. Um, we'll get that all in there. And then tear it out again. It's at zero. And we're going to go ahead and add the safflower oil, one ounce of safflower oil. Oh, here we go. And the way we sell a lot of these oils are with a we used to have press and seal liners that were foamy on one side and then some of the foam would degrade and get in the product. They now have a metal liner, um, which is great. Okay. One ounce of safflower oil. And then we're going to do a half ounce of the bubble up. Sometimes, I'm going to turn this off for this. Sometimes people say, and, and I'm just, you know what, we're two friends with a glass of wine, and okay, there may be more than two of us on live, I don't know. But sometimes I get the question, why do you call it bubble up? Why do you call it sick, slick fix? Why do you call it a certain emulsifying wax? Why don't you call it BTMS 50? Why don't you call it Natrasorb? Why don't you call it whatever trade name? And that's because um, over the years, Wholesale Supplies Plus has gotten a lot of cease and desist notices from those companies to quit using their trademark names. Um, we don't, we're not a basement operation. We don't move just 10 pounds of this stuff a year. We don't even, we, we move more than 10 pounds in a day. Um, and I get it, they're trying to protect their trademark, but it causes a lot of confusion. Um, we're going to get into the preservative. I think the preservatives were the most recent shocking um, cease and desist we received. You know, ger the Germaben was invented by a company called ISP. They were eventually sold to Ashland. Ashland said, we want to protect our trademark. You can no longer use the names Germaben, Optifen, and all the ones we own. And we thought, you know what, we could just discontinue those and you wouldn't have preservative op options. Um, but instead, you'll see on our website, we just change them to names we hope are generic enough that the entire industry will take over. Because eventually, if they gave us, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microwave, if they, or hit the microphone, if they gave us the cease and desist, they're going to give smaller suppliers the cease and desist. So anyway, I'm just going to tell you the bubble up is the name we gave. If you're looking for the trade name, simply look at the ingredients. It's not hard. Um, so that's my soapbox. I'm off my soapbox. So anyway, so we're going to add now a half ounce of bubble up. I'm sorry, one ounce of bubble up. Oop. Turn it on. Take my metal press and seal off. And if you guys want more information on the cease and desist and all that, just put it, I can't do too much online. We're just not allowed to use their names. Um, I think it kind of sucks, but I'm happy to try and answer some questions for you. So the Bubble Up is more of a foaming agent. The Foaming Bath Whip has a lot of um, bubble and lathering agents, but the Bubble Up gives it even more. And what they found in testing with the mechanics scrub is that mechanics have such oily hands and dirty hands 
that the foaming bath whip wasn't enough in itself to give them the lather and the scrub they needed to cut through the oil and grease that a mechanic normally experiences. So that's why they added, um, let's see. Oh boy, they wrote the new, I'm gonna ask Jackie to tell me, it's the new preservative, it's the scorbic acid 2PF. 2PF means paraben free. What is, it's the same as OptiPen Plus, which I'm not allowed to put in writing anymore, um, but that's the preservative in the recipe. So in this case, it is um, 0.2 ounces, or 0.175, I'm sorry. So, yes. Oh, look, we included it on the label. Yikes. Don't turn us in, please. We're just here for you guys. We're trying to help. So it's now called Scorbic Acid Plus 2PF. Okay, it's very complicated. Ascorbic acid plus two over preservatives, paraben free. Jeez, I don't know. So anyway, 0.175, perfect. Put that in there, and I'm gonna scrape all that goodness because I'm not so into bugs in my stuff. Um, Optipofen Plus, you can read online the pH and the, like how to use it and stuff, but the big thing is it protects um, against mold, bacteria, and growth, uh, yeast growth, which I don't know about you guys, but I'm not so into those. Okay, and then the vitamin C, or vitamin E, I'm sorry. Big thing with vitamin E is it is not a preservative. It drives me bat poop crazy to read people are preserving their products with vitamin E. You guys, it doesn't do that. It's an antioxidant that helps your oils and butters from going rancid. Doesn't protect against mold, doesn't protect against yeast or bacteria, but it does help it slow from smelling like that rotten Crisco that you find, I don't know, I don't use Crisco, but you might find it in your cupboard after it's sat there a while. And we're gonna do point one, two, five. Perfect. Now, if we were closer friends, I wouldn't have said bat poop. I would have said something else, but hopefully that gave you guys a little chuckle. Okay, so I just want, I'm going through all these right now. The only thing we haven't added is the stabilizer and the fragrance. So, I'm gonna turn this down, I, whoop, down the other way. Um, so the fragrance, half a recipe is one ounce. Debbie? Yes. Uh, someone, uh, Carla would like to know if our products are FDA Okay, so I'm gonna repeat the questions because again, it's our home. We don't have two microphones. We don't have fancy lights hanging from the ceiling. And Carla just asked on Facebook the comment of if our ingredients are FDA certified or tested, can FDA you- FDA certified. FDA certified. And my answer is the FDA does not certify most ingredients. What they do do is batch inspect different colors. And um, I will tell you, we, if you, um, the, this recipe today does not contain any colors. We do use either food grade ingredients or ingredients that are specifically developed for cosmetics and we use use levels that are speci specified by the manufacturer for cosmetics. But the FDA only certifies um, dye colors. They do not certify micas, they don't certify neons, they don't even certify dyes that go into like liquid dyes. They only certify the powder dyes and that law goes way, way back. So um, all of these ingredients today are appropriate for cosmetics and would be outside of the scope of FDA testing. Great question, Carla. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back to fragrance and we're gonna do one ounce. And this is bourbon vanilla fragrance. 
and it smells sexy to me. It's um, a little bit of musk. It's a little bit of bourbon, like um, not bourbon, vanilla, like the elixir or the extract. It's like bourbon, a bottle of bourbon you would drink, vanilla. Very masculine scent. Good job, marketing team. We're going to use one ounce. And if you're not good in a drip like this, and I have paper towels over here, um, what you can do, and I'm only at 0.9, I don't want to go over, is you can take a dropper and fill it. And I didn't do that, but what you can do then is if you overfill, you can very cleanly kind of put it back in. Um, I have a ton of plastic beakers here. I probably should be using one different one. But, you know, I, I started off by saying, I want to do this the same as I did it when I was making products for myself in my home. And I would only spend the money on one beaker and clean it and reuse it. So that's what we're doing. So that's the fragrance. I just want to run through this. If you're making the full recipe, one pound of foaming bath whip, again, I'm doing half, but I'm going to give you the full recipe. One pound of foaming bath whip, one pound of pumice, two ounces of apricot kernel oil, two ounces of safflower oil, two ounces of bubble up, two ounces of the bourbon vanilla fragrance, two ounces of the vanilla color stabilizer, which I have not added. We will add that. Um, two ounces of preservative, a half ounce of the vitamin E we did, and then the jars. I got to tell you, kudos to the marketing team because you have almost no waste when you buy the two ounce containers in this stuff. So it's not like we, they gave you a recipe where you're using half a bottle, half a bottle. You're using it all. And because our filling machines fill it correct, you know, fill the bottles to the weight, everything except fragrance. Um, you don't even really need a scale. So anyway, Sue in customer service, kudos. This is Sue's recipe. If you guys uh, ever see her posting, give her a shout out. Okay, so we're gonna go up. This is the fragrance. I'm gonna go ahead and put the stabilizer in. Just. Now, if you're making this for home use, that's exactly what I would do. If you're making this for resale, what you probably should have done, and I should have done, is added the stabilizer to the fragrance because once you um, add that, you've now compounded your own fragrance. And I'll, I'm just going to run this for a second and I'll explain to you the issue. The company that makes the stabilizer won't tell us what's in it because it's officially part of the fragrance family and it's protected by trademark. So people often say, well, what are the ingredients in the um, vanilla color stabilizer? I don't have that answer for you. They will not tell us. What they say is mix the two together. I can tell you from personal experience doing it the way I did it, it works just fine. Um, so if you're making this to resell, Mix the fragrance, add the stabilizer, dump it in. You've made your own fragrance. Now you don't need to put it on your label. It's a loophole in the law. It is what it is. If you're making it for yourself, you can put the fragrance in, you can put the stabilizer in. And that's the truth. Someone had a question about um, eventual discoloration. Okay, so there's a question on does it eventually discolor? And I'm gonna answer that in one second. I just wanna whip this real quick. Um, will this eventually discolor? And what I want to do is show you the current color because if it discolors, it won't discolor much. It's been in our lab for some time. Um, and I will show you. It's right there. There it is. Thank you. Um, it has discolored to this color in our lab. Can we get a close-up shot of that? Um, and I'm going to show you the color it is now, but it's 
it's a little bit farther apart. If you don't want to add the stabilizer, don't add it. To be honest with you, most dudes don't care what color it is. Um, but they also don't read the label or anything. So that's, that's up to you. We have one off-topic question about the conference. Okay, I have an off-topic question about the conference. So there's someone who registered and they haven't received like, information. Yep. She just wanted to know if and when she received it. So I don't know if you guys have heard about Handmade Conference. And the question is, she registered and she hasn't heard anything. And you probably got a confirmation of thank you for registering for the conference like you would any checkout in a shopping cart. So Handmade Conference is a conference that we put on. Last year was our first year. This year will be our second year. And it's June, check the website. I think it's June 8th through the 10th. Seems like my whole month of June is blocked out. Um, and it is a, it's a four-day event. For $950, that includes three nights hotel, nine meals, two or three nights of entertainment. I know we're going by bus to a casino one night, three nights. We're going by bus to Handmade Studio one night, and we're doing lots of fun stuff there. And one night, we're going to a place called the Hofbrau House. And if you've not been there, it's a big beer garden with authentic German food, and we're all going to stand on benches and maybe do shots together, I don't know. Or you can just take video of us doing shots. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So um, we have a lot of great speakers, Maura Bosworth, Allison Boat, um, Holly Port's coming in. Um, there's some others I don't remember off the top of my head, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, it's a time where we're gonna make tons of products. And we're gonna teach you how to do everything from making it to labeling it to starting your business. Um, so anyway, the answer is don't be concerned that you haven't gotten more information yet. Usually you'll start to get a lot of information around February, March. You'll start getting emails to the point where you're like, Debbie, quit emailing me. Um, but right now we're just sort of nailing everything down. And it, I mean, it's all planned, but we're just, we're kind of in a, hey, sign up mode. We're only going to accept um, 300 people this year. Last year we had 400 and we felt like it was a little bit too much. It was between two weeks and it, I think we actually had closer to 500, 250 or 300 each week. This year what we did is we rented out the whole hotel, all but 15 rooms because the Marriott won't let you rent every single room in case probably there's a water leak or something. So we have the whole hotel. It's going to be soapy, soapy fun. So if you're interested, go to handmadeconference.com. Or there's a, um, I don't know if you noticed, we redid our website at Wholesale and we have tabs. So it's like buy supplies, I think. And then it says Handmade 101. That's our learning library. And then it says conference and magazine. If you click on conference, you'll get information. But if you go to handmadeconference.com, you'll see the hotel. It's super cool and whatnot. So let me know if that didn't answer your question. Man, for someone who didn't want to plug stuff, I'm doing a really crappy job. I am sorry. Um, Okay, so because it's a mechanic scrub, we picked, or Sue picked, and again, kudos to Sue, these really cool jars. They're double wall black jars, but the reason why I like them, and I think they're so cool, is they have this flip lid, so guys, dudes, can always just leave it kind of open at the sink and dip their hand and scoop it out, um, because what I found over the years is otherwise they leave it like this on the counter. They don't ever put the lid on. So this way you can, they can use it like this, they can leave it like this, you can walk by and just do that. Um, so um, this recipe in full makes uh, da, 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 about seven jars. So I expect half a recipe to make about three jars. I gotta tell you, I might have whipped a little too much because it looks like more than three. Um, ooh, it is nice and fluffy. I'm going to get a bigger, a bigger spoon. Um, so go ahead and fill it up. If you're selling this, you want to make sure you weigh it because even though this is an eight ounce jar, it only holds about four ounces of product. Um, so while I'm filling these, if there's any other questions, ask away. Hey guys, make sure you share this video up there. And like us um, 
I have some surprises I'll announce at the end. I could announce it now because I'm just filling jars. Um, I talked about Allison um, Vogt. Gosh, Allison, you know, you and I have been friends forever. I hope I'm saying your married name right. Um, she is actually going to join us for Soapin' with Slippers in February. And just before I went on, I said, hey, Holly, Port, if you're out there, when are you going to come and bring your jammies and soap with me and your slippers and um, in my house? I haven't heard from her. Um, I can tell you that Sharon Johnson, who's the queen of hot process soap making, has said she would love to come and teach a class at Handmade Studio and do a Facebook Live. Um, we have a couple others in the works. I just don't want to announce quite yet. But if you guys have people that you follow on Facebook, I want you to suggest it in the comments because we want to fly them in, put them up in a hotel, feed them real good, show them how nice Cleveland is, and um, have them put their PJs on and their slippers on and come soap with me. Um, so... Now, one of the comments that's on Facebook a lot right now is, hey, won't the foaming bath whip fall? And I got, you know, you, you're filling it up now, and I'm going to open it in two days, and it's going to fall. And I got to tell you, it's, um, and just to show you, this is four jars, and I have about that much left, if that helps. Um, so about the falling. I have to tell you, we have tried to replicate this for like six months in the lab, and we can't do it. And then we tried to replicate it in the studio, and we did it a little bit, but we couldn't consistently figure out why. So if you turn into our last Facebook Live video, I gave you guys um, two recipes that you can add to the foam, or two solutions that you can add to the foaming bath whip that if your recipe falls for whatever reason, you're able to adjust it. One was adding um, 10 ounces of clear melt and pour soap to every 16 ounces of foaming bath whip. Um, the other one was adding, I think it was like 1.7 ounces or something of the um, bubble wash thickener to your recipe, and we found it didn't fall. I overfilled that one. We'll give that one to my husband and tell him he, he did it. Um, so there's that. We don't know if it's the paddle that causes some of these to fall. In other words, if you use the paddle instead of the whisk, is it the speed? Is it, you know, the, the length of time? And it got to the point that we were troubleshooting and having so much, so much difficulty replicating it that we thought, let's just come up with a solution. People just want an answer. So those are your answers. So yes, a question? question. Um, people would like to know what you would suggest to maybe the retail cost of the retail price of this. If you could okay, like so the first question is, what would you charge for this? And my answer is always, it depends on the area of the, the, of the country that you're located. And it also depends on your competition. So the first thing when I price products is, I sit down and I figure out the cost. I'm going to ask Jackie if, is this a, a kit yet on the website? Okay, once it goes on as a kit, you'll see the cost. And you don't have molds on this kit or things that are equipment that you're not going to re, you know, that you're going to sell. So I would take the kit price and I would try to double it. So let's say the kit ends up being $25, and I've made that up. Um, I would look at taking, going to $50, but dividing it by four. So maybe then it would be $10.95. I always say if you're selling at craft shows or you're selling at farmers markets and direct, at least try to double your cost. If your goal is to ever sell wholesale, you want to triple it, or I'm sorry, you want to go four times because eventually your wholesale price is going to be double your cost. Hopefully, if you're selling wholesale, you're buying in bigger containers than a one pound. You're going to buy gallons. You're going to be buying the 20 gallon. You're going to be buying huge amounts, which will help lower your cost. 
So the first thing I do is I look at my costs and if I'm selling at craft shows or to friends or whatever, I try to double it, not wholesale. Then I look at what's it selling for? What are the people, like what will they pay? So let's say this comes out to $10.95 and I would have a friend or someone try it. If I can get $14.95, I'm going for it. If I can get $19.95, I'm going for it. If my girlfriend says, hey, my husband can't live without this, I'm going $24.95. I'm not taking advantage, but you know there is the law of supply and demand, and I try to fill that gap. So um, that's it. The other thing is you got to realize the West Coast charges way more money than maybe Alabama, Ohio, places where the cost of living is lower. So that's why it's really hard for us to give one set price. Hope that answered your question. Abby, second. Second question is wondering if you would mind testing it because they want to see what it looks like. You want me to test it. I will at the end because I'm going to end up getting my hands dirty and I have a sink right here. Are we able to get the sink in the shot? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So not quite yet. I want to label it first and then we'll use a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I'm already pulling up my sleeves like I'm using it. <laughs> so um, what we did is we developed three labels for this mechanic scrub, one on the top, one across the front, and then we even did the bottom label for those people that are going to want to sell it. It has directions, it has your warnings, it has your um, ingredients, and it has a place on the label for your company name. I am so thrilled to tell you guys that these labels are available for free now at Wholesale Supplies Plus on the Handmade 101 page. You I feel so strongly that I want you guys to label your products the right way. I'm not going to make you buy the kit to get the label. If you have these ingredients or maybe you have an allergy to one and you want to substitute it out, go for it. Make sure you change your ingredient label. But I want you to have these for free. So go to wholesalesuppliesplus.com. Go to that Handmade 101 tab, which used to be our library. We're trying to get people into the Handmade 101 and look for the labels. They're free. You can download them. Um, you can put them on the big label paper and cut them out. You can, is the Word document on there? PDF. It's a PDF. I'll make sure we get the Word a Word document on there so you can change the ingredients. You can add your company name if you want to. Um, you can put the weight, whatever you want. But this design, you guys can use it and sell it. You can give it to friends, whatever. They'll print out on sheets like this. So go ahead and ask some more questions. I'm just going to label a couple of these. Do we give the um, label size if they don't want to cut them out? Can we include the recommended? Yep. They said yes. Um, someone, uh, Beverly, is that her name? Hi, Beverly. Welcome to my house. Yeah, you know what, let, let, Beverly, right now the labels are not included for the kits, and I really want them to be included for the kits. We have a whole lot of kits, and um, we have a growing marketing department, and our goal is to get you labels for every kit. Right now we don't, but we are really committed to an, an initiative in 2018 is to give you all the labels for free because I strongly believe that you don't have to buy the kit to get the label. Like, we don't have to sell you guys everything. We can just give you tools to be successful. So I hope you like that answer, kind of. So I will tell you in labeling these, there's a few things I want to point out. First of all, notice... Um, where the jar opens, in this case, it would open here, and face that towards you, and that then face the label towards you, because you want the customer or the user to see the product name as they're opening, and then, um, then so keep it facing towards you, and then you're going to put the second label on, the front, I'll show you, 
so that they're seeing it all facing the same way. And then the bottom label, face it towards you and now turn it. So whoever would have thought there's a science to labeling this stuff? You, you know, we think about FDA and all that stuff, but it's a marketing thing. Oh, what's this scrub? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, here are the labels. So you want it all, oh, look at that beautiful label. Oh, there's the front. Oh, there's the ingredients. They shouldn't have to be turning the jar around. So um, I'll do one more. Um, I really like our glossy water resistant labels. They're not waterproof, so you can't put them underwater in a bathtub and expect them not to disintegrate. But you can um, expose them to water and they're not gonna smear. It's a label paper we sell. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little drink of wine. Where's my wine? Cheers. And um, they won't smear. So, so someone would like to know is the ink is waterproof? The ink is the ink waterproof. You know what? I'm going to test this. Let's throw a little bit of water on there and see in the testing. So the question was, is the ink waterproof? And we'll see. Okay. Any other questions before I get my hands dirty? No. Nope. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, I'm going to go through my list because, again, you guys, this is impromptu. I don't go around at work wearing um, Snoopy Woodstock pajamas and slippers, but you guys are in my home because we're doing this as friends, and we're soaping in our slippers, so I made a couple notes. We talked about the magazine. We talked about the labels. Hey, there's a huge surplus sale going on at Wholesale Supplies Plus. Stuff is up to 75% off. Um, so make sure you stop over there and jump on it. It's going to sell out fast. Your coupons, if you're a customer of Wholesale Supplies Plus, your January coupons expire the end of the month. Jump on them. There's some free stuff in there in your coupon vault. And that's it. Gosh, I sounded like a QVC salesman for a minute there. Okay, so I'm going to, can I go over to the, this little sink? Yes, I'm going to. Okay, so this isn't going to be as smooth as if we were in the studio. We're kind of going over, and we're going to go over here. I kind of am so privileged that you guys are in my house. Thank you for being here. I'm going to clean out my sink because off camera I was moving stuff over here. And I'm so excited. Thank you, Abby. She unplugged the cord so I don't get electrocuted on, I, I won't be the first one on Facebook Live. So, are we ready? Okay, I overfilled this jar a little. And I'm going to go ahead and probably should have taken my rings off. I don't know if you can see how creamy. The grit on this, it, I'm actually going to use this on my feet. Um, it's not an emulsified grit. So if, if like our emulsified sugar scrub, I think there's a retail product out in the market that it's real, um, oh gosh, you guys write the answer for me, but it's a real thick, like, it's not like that. It is a creamy lather. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Not big Hollywood bubbles, but that's okay because I don't know how many guys really like. Ho I call those big bubbles from, like, in your bathtub Hollywood bubbles. And um, I wish I had dirty hands because this feels, like, softer than sugar. I don't know. It feels really good. I kind of don't want to stop. I don't know what questions do you have. It gives a nice fine lather and it's it's really got a nice grit to it. But you don't get those big Hollywood bubbles, but I got to tell you guys, my husband would kill me if I gave him something a soap with Hollywood bubbles. You know those big giant bubbles, this is a little too hot, sorry. And you can see it rinsed right off. It actually sparkled up my wedding ring pretty well. Um, so I'm going to grab a paper towel and then we'll test the label. Any other questions so far? 
No, okay. All right, so the question earlier was, um, is the label waterproof, the ink waterproof? So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a little bit of water out of the sink here. And I'm gonna put it on the writing. And it's not smearing at all. And this was done with a laser printer, a color laser. I have to imagine if it was an inkjet, ink, water, might, but this is with a laser printer, and you should, I mean, gosh, printers are so cheap these days that that, it didn't, it didn't smear at all with water. So you're good there. Any other questions? Uh, Gloria would like to know if this could be put in a toddle bottle. Yes, Gloria. So the question is, will this fit in a toddle bottle? And can I go back that way or not? Sure. Or can you just hand me my wine? Because we're at the end. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So Gloria's question was, could this go in a toddle bottle? I think it would be great in a toddle, but I would put it in a decorator, um, like frosting bag, whatever, the, you know, the name escapes me, and I would squeeze it in. This isn't going to be pourable, and usually those openings aren't super big. Um, and I would use the scrub um, tip opening and you're going to be fine. My only um, caution would be this is an eight ounce jar and it weighed about four ounces. So if you put it in an eight ounce toddle, you're going to get about four ounces, about half the amount. It's going to feel really light. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I actually think there's a lot of mechanics that would probably leave this in their pocket and take it with them because you could scrub your hands and go under a hose. I mean, let's face it, they all don't clean their hands in a kitchen sink. So good question. Anything else? You guys, I am so excited you are here for our first ever premiere, Soaping in Our Slippers. Um, I hope you tune in in February and see um, myself with Allison Vote. We're going to go over labeling. We're going to make some really cool products. They might not be soapy products, but they're going to be really cool um, for Valentine's Day or just after Valentine's Day, and she is the label guru. Um, there's a lot of people that um, interpret the website, they write books, what on. Allison lives and breathes labeling, and she knows it from the inside out. So it's always good to just ask somebody those real world questions. Like it may say this in print on the FDA website, but what, like, how do you really do it? Um, so she's awesome, and I just talked to her before we went live, and she gave me the green light for February, so look for that. Make sure you subscribe to our page. Make sure you like us. Make sure you share us. And make sure you comment on other things you'd like us to make in my kitchen. So with that, I'm signing off. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. Bye.